on to something, it's about to get bananas in here. This is Art Explains. As it turns out, bananas like these are a story of mutations, maladies, and murder. Murder? I didn't see that last one coming. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start at the beginning. What is a banana? The term bananas has been used to mean crazy since at least the 1950s and 60s, and once you start to look closely at them, you'll begin to understand why. First of all, banana trees do not exist. Banana plants are a perennial herb, and bananas themselves technically qualify as a berry. So go ahead and say banana berries from now on, it's technically correct. A root structure called the mat produces shoots called suckers, which later grow into pseudostems, only one of which produces bananas. And this is why the term banana suckers is now in my search history. And search. Oh! Huh! So that's a banana plant for you. Now you might have heard before that the banana is in danger of extinction, but how is that possible if they're pretty much everywhere? Bananas are the most commonly eaten fruit in the world, unless we count the processed tomato, and they are cheap and freely available in most markets. So what's going on? We're not running out of them like we are manatees. First, it should be clarified what people mean when they say banana, because there's actually over 1,200 species of them. But if you live in the United States, Canada, most of Europe, and several other countries, you've probably only been exposed to a few of these. The top banana in these countries is called the Cavendish, a sweet banana that people often consume raw. But most other species of bananas are cooking bananas, or plantains, that just don't taste good when you eat them raw. And these cooking bananas are very diverse, coming in shades of red, green, brown, and even pink. Taken all together, bananas are often ranked as the fourth most important agricultural crop in the world, ranked among supergiants such as rice, corn or maize, and wheat. All bananas are descendants or crossbreeds of wild banana species such as Musa balbiciana, pictured here. Take a look at those seeds. Those are apparently so hard that you could crack a tooth biting into one. Fortunately, when you crossbreed the right species of wild bananas, you end up with new species, or cultivars, with improved traits, such as seedlessness or better taste. Similar processes also lead to better apple and citrus varieties. But if we breed the seed out of bananas, where do new bananas come from? The banana fairy? Hey there, sorry I didn't mean to wake you. Just let me slip this under your pillow real quick. You're so beautiful. See you later. To get more of the same kind of bananas, we need to take cuttings from old banana plants and reproduce them that way. This produces genetically identical plants that produce virtually identical fruit. Every Cavendish banana you have ever eaten has been a clone of a previous Cavendish banana. But this presents a serious problem for the banana. Disease hates diversity, like ducks hate jet engines. Part of the reason humans are so good at surviving disease outbreaks is that each one of us is differently genetic. What? Each one of us is genetically different which allows for variations in disease resistance. But if you're a banana, double check. It's only a matter of time until a disease comes along that you are entirely defenseless against. And this is why the banana is in danger of extinction. The scary thing is that a scenario almost exactly like this has already happened. If you live in one of the previously mentioned countries where the Cavendish is king, it is altogether likely that your grandparents enjoyed an entirely different cultivar of banana berry. <laughs> oh. It was called the Gros Michel, or Big Mike, and it was a different fruit than the Cavendish today. It was bigger and longer lasting. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. So whatever happens to Big Mike? An illness called Panama disease wipes them out commercially. And so many plants died and had to be destroyed that Big Mike disappeared from the market. However, Big Mike is not technically extinct. And after some internet digging, I found some sites where banana aficionados trade and sell these plants. I read the testimonies of a few of them that had actually eaten Big Mike, and they all agreed it was a superior fruit that tasted more like a banana. That sounds good, I guess. Or is that like how the chicken packet in ramen tastes more like chicken than chicken does? If any of you have ever eaten Big Mike, please tell me more in the comments below. So anyway, the Cavendish banana replaced Big Mike commercially, and today, in many places, such as the United States, it is the only banana that many people have eaten. Sadly, a new strain of Panama disease has been attacking Cavendish bananas now. And unlike the old strain of Panama disease, this new strain affects many more kinds of sweet and cooking bananas. By some accounts, it could affect up to 85% of the banana species. And if this new strain of the disease isn't stopped, it could potentially economically and nutritionally cripple many countries. The good news is that scientists are hard at work finding answers. Fields such as plant biology are learning more about plant pathogens every year. Murder? Mm, I don't know, Mock. I kind of wanted to end this on a positive note. <laughs> Murder. I suppose I did say something about murder at the beginning, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Murder. All right, fine. 
Mmm, murder, 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 murder. You don't have to be so happy about it. Bananas have a dark history. The term Banana Republic comes from the idea that many nations have been, and still are, economically dependent on the banana. It's like how a burrito depends on the tortilla. Without it, the whole thing falls apart. Which brings us to the Banana Massacre. In 1928, after some escalating tensions, a bunch of machine guns were brought to a large banana worker protest. The banana workers were demanding ludicrous things such as eight-hour workdays and six-day work weeks. Things got ugly. I found reports that the death toll was anywhere from 9 to 3,000 workers, but the most reliable sources that I could find, a series of old telegrams, seemed to put it somewhere in the high hundreds or low thousands. The death toll was never firmly established, partly because the bodies were allegedly dumped into the sea. Things are getting too serious in here, we need a joke or something. That'll do, I guess. Anyway, banana companies are such economical powerhouses in some countries that they're often accused of doing things such as staging coups or launching bloody revolutions or other totally not cool things. Politics aside, it sucks that something as delicious and comical as the banana has been used to harm the people who created it. So there you have it. Created by humans, bananas are like our children. Which makes this the most tasty case of filial cannibalism I can think of. I will remember you. Will you remember me? <clears throat> uh, uh, that, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Click some of the links up on the screen if you want more videos, and be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.